So today I'm actually sat in our dormer loft conversion because I'm going to show you how I've been renovating our spare bedroom and I've been using some store-bought chalk paint and making my own chalk paint for pennies as well but this time I used it in my paint sprayer so keep on watching if you want to see how I get on. The other thing is I can't believe it I've actually got through to the voting stage of the Amara Interior Blogging Awards and if you could vote for me again it takes 10 or 20 seconds I'll leave the form here or here and I would absolutely appreciate it so uh, yeah anyway keep on watching if you want to see how I get on. <laughs> so this is how the room looked before and we'd never done anything to it until now you can see a bit of white paint runs because we painted all the walls I don't think there's any point showing that because I already showed you how I decorated our other bedroom. But I've been dying to paint this tongue and groove wall. So this is my DeWalt Multicutter and you might remember that Manu Manu kindly sent me this so I'll leave a link to it below. I'm using the sanding attachment on it. I found it's such a handy tool for loads of jobs. And I'm just keying the surface before I paint some Ron Seal furniture paint on there. And then using a damp sponge I just went over it all to remove any dust particles. Now quite a few of you recently recommended this low tech frog tape and although it's not perfect on every paint this is definitely my favourite and it worked perfectly for this job so I'm just applying it to my white painted wall and I want a clean line. So this is a Ronsil chalky furniture paint in duck egg blue. It was quite expensive at $16.99 a small tub but on this occasion I could not be bothered to make my own. But this one I knew I didn't have to seal it at the end with a wax but unlike most chalk paints it did suggest sanding first. But you'll notice later that I don't when I come to painting my bed. So firstly I'm cutting the wall. So I'm just using a paintbrush to get into the awkward corners. And then I thought let's just do it in the tongue grooves as well to make sure I get good coverage. And then follow that with a mini roller and I gave it two coats but I can't remember if I used one tin or two tins. Then I had to paint the bedroom door but I didn't catch that one on video so I'd like to show you the method that I used on our bathroom door here. And this is a subscribers tip so thank you so much and that is to place a bin liner around a paint tray and I'd sellotape it up so it didn't move about and I'd pour the satin wood straight in just quickly use a paintbrush for the, any of the grooves and then apply the rest of the paint with a mini paint roller. This made life so much easier so when I was done I'd take off the bag and turn it inside out and throw away. And note I'm also wearing gloves as well for easy clean up. So now it was time to paint my double bed that I got for my 13th birthday but unfortunately it's got a bit knocked over the last few years while it's been in storage in our garage and I thought it'd go perfect with my newly painted wall. So the first thing I needed to do was give it a thorough clean with warm soapy water. But this time I want to make my own chalk paint and I have showed this in a few videos before but I've never measured things accurately, I've just done it by eye and my favourite method is to use calcium carbonate and I personally think this mix is identical to Annie Sloan or possibly better and it's far cheaper and I just use it with bog standard emulsion paint. So just for this exercise so I can share my quantities I'm weighing everything because most American tutorials were suggesting one cup of paint to two tablespoons of calcium carbonate and two tablespoons of water but I know they're not the same as a British cup and tablespoon so I worked out it was 530 grams of paint to two and a half tablespoons of calcium carbonate and water and now I've got the paint in my container I've got a separate tub where I can mix the calcium with the water and turn it into a paste before I mix it all together. So I'm going to be trialling this with my Wagner fence and decking sprayer and I've never spray painted chalk paint so it's going to be a test but I do know from lots of other shabby chicas that spray painters give a texture that's smooth as a baby's bum and I needed the job to be done as quickly as possible. So you'll notice I'm not sanding this surface and I know that it sticks. So I've got rags down, I've got a face mask on so I don't breathe anything in and hands isn't around either and I absolutely loved how it was applying, I loved the finish, it was quick, it was easy but as I got in the zone moving around I kept knocking the cable out of the socket and I'd have to plug it in again, that was frustrating. I also noticed that the chalk paint kept drying on the nozzle and clogging it up so I'd have to turn it off and clear it with my finger and this happened about every minute and really slowed me down. But I've since had a recommendation from Rob at Spend Time Save Money DIY YouTube channel and that is to use a filter. Apparently you can buy them for the Wagner sprayer 
and others. So that's definitely something I'm gonna to have to look into. But the clogging started to really slow the job down and I really didn't wanna mess about. So I started alternating with a foam roller, but I didn't like the different texture it created. The sprayer gave a much better coverage. So I went back to the Wagner sprayer again and it pretty much came to a halt and I thought that's it, I've had enough. So I just got a paintbrush out instead, knowing that I'd have to send any of the brush strokes out. So one of the great things about chalk paint is that it dries really quickly and by the time I'd finished painting everything I went back to the first section and I'd sand everywhere with fine grit sandpaper. I'm using 220 here and with each shabby cheap piece I think it's best just to go with the flow because different furniture can react differently. So I ended up going for a distressed look because I wanted a coastal feel in the bedroom and I thought it'd look perfect against a more pristine looking chalk paint wall. And finally, I need to seal up my paintwork and I'm using stuff I already had, which is Rust-Oleum Clear Furniture Wax. And just apply that with a lint-free cloth. It's best to go for something plain with no dyes in it because the dyes can transfer to the paint. So I'd go over it everywhere and just rub it in, but it can take some of the paintwork off. So if you want to be really careful, you can use a clean paintbrush and remove it with another clean paintbrush or just wipe the excess off with a clean rag. So now my bed's in place, it was time to hang some posters. That poster lounge kindly sponsored my blog this week, so I'm gonna leave a review in a blog post link below, so feel free to check it out. And after a quick look on the website, I decided to pick some of our favorite films. So first off, I picked Back to the Future, my favorite film, then Shaun of the Dead, love Simon Pegg films, I had to have Hot Fours, and my fiance picked Matrix. But these are the films that we love together. And I'm gonna hang this Zelda one, which is for my brother for his gaming room. Now the attachments look very straightforward and I worked out where the centre was of the top back. I've got two rubber pads at the bottom corners to stop it moving about while it's hung up. And then I just peeled the back of the self-adhesive strip to expose the sticky part and placed it in line with my pencil mark and pressed it firmly. And the instructions say to leave it there for about 24 hours before you hang it up. And then I needed to work out where I was going to hang them. So I eyeballed it just to get a visual. I noticed that the cladding wasn't quite central, so I decided to go with where the cladding was instead. And because I'm screwing to wood, I dug out some mini screws that I had, and it fits just inside this circle bit, and then the pictures hang on that. So at the centre of that pencil line, I pre-drilled a hole with a 2 mil drill bit, and then I just screwed it to the wall, and then hung it up. Hey, I like it. And then I just repeated that for the other three to get a pattern that I liked. So if you'd love to see me win a blogging award for the best home improvement and DIY blog, then I'll leave a link below, but it would be awesome if you could vote for me. So thank you so much to Poster Lounge for sponsoring my blog below. I'll leave a link to the review, but I'm very pleased that I've got three of my favorite films on my wall. But what film would you put on there? That's what I'd like to know. I'd love to talk music and film all day, but that's not what this channel is all about. But I know my brother's gonna love his Zelda poster in his gaming room. So um, yeah, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in my next one. Thanks for watching, bye.